Nihao nyang, hello, I am the Dark Fae, and welcome back to Confessions of a First Time Dungeon Master. As always, if you missed the last session, I'll put a link to it up in the corner for you over here. You can go check it out, catch up on what you missed, and then come back here to find out what happened next. We are now in session 48, so let's begin. Okay, so last we left off, things were a little bit dire with um them their party kind of in the middle of combat against this large corrupted kind of a warforged titan so the titan is currently sort of heading his way into the ice caves a bit in escape mode currently and this is kind of where i have a bit of trouble well maybe not trouble but like some indecisiveness about how i want its behavior to go because I could have had it, I think, keep advancing and kind of have it dash and make a beeline kind of for the caverns. And then it's kind of up to the party to try and chase it. But then I also think I messed up and not really getting it to fully run away. And that... And then when the party members kind of caught up to it and started attacking it again, it then responded and began to be hostile again. So I think I kind of did like an in-between kind of thing where I should have done one or the other, keep attacking or keep running. Um, at least in the first rounds, because it could have actually gotten a bit further away than it did. But anyway, so to summarize, as it started running away and people kind of trying to catch up and not get hit and... Also heal, uh, Umric did uh, go to cast Revivify on Ivar, luckily. Um, so the way I'm doing resurrection checks, it's very much in line with campaign one so far of Critical Role, where outside of combat, doing like a long ritual will take kind of a skill challenge sort of a thing. And then on the battlefield, Revivify takes a wisdom or spellcaster spellcaster ability modifier check so in this case clerics it's normally wisdom so with some begging from basil to bring ivar back um emric casts revivify he rolls his spellcasting ability check which is a d20 in his case plus four the dc is 10 he rolls a nine luckily he's bardically inspired so he's able to get past that GC and is successful in reviving Avar. Originally, if he had if he had taken a few rounds to revive Avar, I was gonna have something maybe mysterious going on in which I would have uh, Avar roll me some charisma saving throws, kind of in secret. But um, it ended up not being relevant, which is good for them. So with everybody up kind of healing as they go the the kind of fresher party members give chase after this warforged titan and um with one kind of clever use of ivard's te black tentacles where it restrains the the warforged on a failed save when they rolled badly so it got restrained they're able to finally finish it off so the kind of spark and the light kind of that seems to be fueling it on the inside it goes dim it powers down and this like kind of weird dark purple kind of webbing that is kind of stuck all over its body starts to kind of melt and dissolve off of it so and they have successfully completed their task after that it's some discussion about what to do next uh, they do update ferne about uh that they have completed their task and might need help, might need someone to pick them up now, tomorrow, later. It's a bit unclear. Eventually they decide that um, they'll contact Fernay again when they return to Reedin Post, which is like the main outpost that's, or the northernmost outpost uh, in the Frigid Wastes, and that they'll send someone to kind of teleport them back once they reach there. So now, but then, now there comes the decision of whether they want to go back, or they were right by this ice cavern that they assume leads to an orb, and Basil, who 
ignores the warning of his of his master wants to go in and fight find destroy i don't know something with the orb i mean if he wants to i'm happy with it so sure it's just they have they took a long rest luckily in between uh, their journeys and uh they decided that like they kind of set up a system where Merrigan was going to wait for them if they didn't send him a message th at the end of the day then he'd assume they're dead and just leave but so they decided that they're going to go into the orb the next into the caverns the next day to deal with the orb and then hopefully make their way out to read and post turning and then would catch them up or would catch up with them teleport them back and that also because they're a little bit worried that if they do go and destroy the orb then they'll be like in violation of their agreement with wistria so they also or fairnay actually also I offer, Fairnay offers, that they could try to raise her, um, without them there, so that way they can kind of take care of their business, the or business that they apparently want to do. Um, so basically I rolled those checks separately, and this is kind of the one, like, free resurrection that I'm really giving them. I think after this, like, I want to make it a point that like NPCs will not be the one to constantly res them. They will have to do so on their own power. And so, or they're going to have to have the components at the very least. So that's a thing that's going to happen sometime, probably in the morning, if Fairnay can arrange it, which she can. She is a She's, yeah, she's like a mafia leader, crime leader. Anyways, um, so after they take a long rest inside the tiny hut, some rolls for, some constitution rolls for exhaustion, which Basil does not make, so he's up to two levels now. I hope they also realize that if they continue on like this and they don't keep making their saves, they could die because they've got like five more checks coming back to read and post. So there's that <laughs> and then so now we're in the morning of the next day and they go into the ice caves marigan has kind of warned them that these ice caves are home to a great many different icy burrowing creatures uh all dangerous and that they're probably what made the tunnels and are it's probably pretty dangerous in there so but they go ahead and I made like a whole map of the thing and kind of described to them where the different um, forks in the tunnels are, different pathways, some kind of above uh, above standing level, some that kind of lead down below. They and there's like a couple of different ways to get where they want to go, but they're mostly following Basil's kind of head to tingle because Criella the entity in the ring does want them to reach their destination, but I'm having him roll perception checks for it. He rolls a natural one on one and when he, they come to like a, a fork with like a, a tunnel kind of heading this way. So if they're like here, there's two that branch off and then one diagonally. Um, and so instead of like a direction, he gets just kind of a t sharp tug downwards and like kind of to his left that's kind of in between the uh, first and second kind of tunnels and they don't really know where to go so and they might have also they might have also made a wrong turn already but like i said there's a few different ways to get here but eventually they, they decide to go i think in the center one they go no, the left one, and they go downwards, which leads to like a small, not a small, like a little cavern, sort of, maybe, I want to say like 60 feet by, f like 60 feet roughly in diameter, and maybe 
40, 50 feet high. But this is where the encounter of the frost worm is. And in case you don't know what a frost worm is, here, I know it's DC uh, CR 23. I have scaled it down. Don't worry. But, uh, because they roll stealth checks as they're going down, a couple of them roll really badly, and Basil rolls a natural one. So it wakes up, and immediately, as it's like, it's, this, it's like unfurling, they barely even see this yet, and like stirring, it lets out its trill. And everyone, except for two people, I lowered the DC. They all rolled below a 13 or below, minus two people. They all failed. So four of them failed. So four of them are stunned for a minute. And they were in combat. And the worm's gonna eat them all before they even reach the guardian. So in my mind, this is not really a combat where you fight. This is a combat where you run. But also, everyone's stunned. So they're gonna have to do something other than just stand around and like hack away at this thing because that's not gonna get it done. And like I've been trying to give them like different kinds, different encounters where they can use like different tactics or different abilities. And it always just seems to end up just. <laughs> Just re, 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 just stabbing a thing to death. And you feel like that's just, they're just gonna die if they keep going up against what I'm putting at them, throwing at them. So, yeah. Um, so, and I think also the ice cavern, the, the frost worms is probably the worst encounter that they could deal with or, or, encounter because uh just of the trill and then it's probably like the biggest creature there is i think frost worms are generally gargantuan i scaled it down it's huge because this is like a young one but uh there's a lot of different encounters a lot of different paths that they could go and they ended up here that doesn't really lead to the orb either I mean, it's possible to get there if they, like, they can be clever about it and try to, like, smash their way through an ice wall that's kind of weak in order to reach the, the room that they need to get to. I don't know, man. I think a lot of times in the game, so far, it's been more about, kind of, like, when the players are have a chance or have been like clever before it has been the players kind of figuring out things and not the characters if that makes sense because there hasn't really been like a time i think where a character has like done something clever with a spell or like an ability in order to circumvent something or to like beat something maybe that's just I can't think of anything right now because it's late, but uh, I'm trying to see if they can find more creative uses for their abilities instead of like, because when they solve puzzles, it's like, you know, the players are solving the puzzles through their characters, not that, not using their characters to solve it, if that, I think that makes sense, it makes sense to me, kind of. Well, anyways, so, um, yeah, so we rolled initiative, and that's where we left off. With a giant worm. And might eat them. I guess both you and I will find out what happens. I think I do this too much. I, like, um, every, I feel like every one of these confessions, I'm like, well, my party might die, so maybe I should fix that. But also, these encounters aren't supposed to be that difficult for a group of six, level eight, characters anyways but that's all for this session i guess so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe for notifications when i put out new videos i love you all and i'll see you in the next one bye